my name is Mohammed Mahmoud and in this video I'll be talking about what is known as the hardest logic puzzle ever as it was called in the Harvard Review of Philosophy academic journal it was published in that journal in the spring of 1996 under the name of the MIT professor George Poulos who actually died that same year Poulos credited the logician Raymond Smullyan as the originator of the puzzle and the computer scientist John McCarthy for adding the extra twist of not knowing what does the or ya mean as you'll see in the puzzle in this video I'll try to explain the solution that was published in the Harvard Review of Philosophy in the simplest detailed way that I found three gods a B and C are called in no particular order true false and random true always speaks truly false always speaks falsely but whether random speaks truly or falsely is a completely random matter your task is to determine the identities of a b and c by asking three yes no questions each question must be put to exactly one god the gods understand English but will answer all questions in their own language in which the words for yes and no are da and ya in some order you do not know which word means which a single god may be asked more than one question questions are permitted to depend on the answers to earlier questions we ask the first question to A. Does da mean yes? If and only if you are true. If and only if B is random. I double F or if and only if means that the truth of either one of the connected statements requires the truth of the other. So either both statements are true or both are false. I made this first table to get all the possible paths that will lead to an answer of da or ya bar a, by a. The table starts from right to left. So we ask the question, then in column number one, we have da means yes or not. In column number two, we have a is true or not. In column number three, we have b is random or not. In column number four, we have the total result of each path and in the last column we have the answer of a da or ya according to the first second and fourth columns so da may mean yes or it may mean no when da means yes it generates two new branches in the next column so when da means yes a is either true or not true and when da means no a is either true or not true so here we filled every path with the necessary check marks and X marks we can see that the green path consists of check mark plus check mark plus check mark so the total result of the path would be correct or a check mark in general when the path passes an odd number of X marks before reaching the total result column on the left then the total result of that path is incorrect or an X mark and whenever the path passes an even number of X marks before reaching the total result column then the total result of that path is correct or a check mark now for the final answer column we revise the first column and we find that the answer indicating a correct result is da according to the first column because da means yes on the on the green path and a is truth in column number two so he will answer with the word that means yes to a correct result in the total result of the path column so for the green path, we have a true answering God that will answer da to any result that could be answered truthfully only with yes or the word that means yes. Then we have a correct 
total result in column number four. So the true God will answer with yes or da in this case to the result that indicates correct by a check mark in the total result column. So the final answer is da. We can also take the sum of the X marks on the path segments that pass through the columns mentioned in the answer column. And if the number is even, then the answer is da. And if the number is odd, then the answer is ya. On the green path, we have zero X marks in columns one, two, and four. So the answer is da, considering the zero as an even number. For this green path, we have an even number of X marks on the path. So the total result is correct. When we take columns one, two, and four on the path, we find that da doesn't mean yes. So ya means yes. And A is true. So he will answer with ya to a check mark in the total result of the path column. And he will answer with da to an X mark in that column. So the answer is ya. And if we look at the segments of the green path that pass columns 1, 2, and 4, we find one X mark. So the sum of the X marks on the segments is odd. So the answer is ya. Now, we fill column 4 with the result of each path taking the odd and even rule into consideration. Then we fill the final answer column for each path according to columns 1, 2, and 4. We can see that whenever we have a check mark in the third column, we have da on the end of that path. And you can see that clearly in orange. And whenever we have an X mark in the third column, we have ya on the end of the path as a final answer. And you can see that clearly in purple. B is always random whenever A answers the first question with da, except for the case where A was the random one, because there is only one random God. We have the following cases according to the answer of A. These shapes will help us to get better understanding. So, whenever the answer is ya, and A is random, we have a set consisting of B and C as not random, as you see in green. And whenever A is not random, and the answer is ya, then the non-random set consists of A and B as you see in pink. And when A is not random, and the answer is Da, then the non-random set consists of A and C as you see in blue. And whenever A is random and the answer is Da, then the non-random set consists of B and C as you see in yellow. By intersecting the two non-random sets related to the Ya answer, we get B as the intersection between the pink and green sets. And it is not random whenever the answer is ya. Then, by intersecting the two non-random sets related to the da answer, we get C as the intersection between the yellow and the blue sets. And it's not random whenever the answer is da. So, whenever the answer is da, then C is definitely not random. And whenever the answer is ya, then B is definitely not random. According to the answer of A, we will call the non-random God Y. So, Y equals to C if the answer of A is da, and Y equals to B if the answer of A is ya. According to the answer of A, we determine Y. Then, we ask Y the following question. Does da mean yes if and only if Rome is in Italy? We make this table where column number one is about da meaning yes or not. Column number two is about Rome being in Italy or not. Column number three is the total result of each path. Column number four is about why being true or not. And the last column is about the final answer for each path according to the first, third, and fourth columns.
so we fill each column as you see here you can see that the second column has a check mark for every path because Rome is definitely in Italy when we take the green path for example we have one X mark before the total result of the path column so the total result is an X mark indicating incorrect when we try to find the final answer of Y at the end of the path we have that da doesn't mean yes so it means no according to column number one then we have that Y is true in column number four so he will answer with da to an incorrect total path result which was indicated by an X mark in column number three so the final answer of the path is da and taking the number of X marks on the path segments passing columns 1, 3, and 4, we find 2x marks, so we have an even number of x marks, which indicates that the answer is da. If we look at the shape, we will find that whenever y is true, according to the fourth column, orange check marks, then the final answer of y is da, also in orange. And whenever y is false, according to the fourth column purple x marks then the final answer of y is yeah as we see in purple y is always true when his answer is da and y is always false when his answer is yeah then we ask why the last question does da mean yes if and only if a is random we make this table where column number one is about what da means and column number two is about a being random or not and column number three is the total result of each path and column number four is about y being true or not which can be determined according to his answer to the second question where he is true if he answered the second question with da as we explained before the final column is about the final answer according to columns number one three and four so we fill the table with the appropriate check marks and x marks we will take the green path as an example so we have one x mark on the path before the total path result column so the sum of x marks is odd and the total result of the path is an x mark then for the final answer, we take the first column and we find that da means yes. Then we take the fourth column and we find that y is false. So his answer to, the, to an incorrect total result will be da. And that is the case considering the x mark in column number three. So the final answer is da. And by checking the number of x marks on the segments of the path that pass columns 1, 3, and 4, which is 2, which is an even number, it is confirmed that the final answer is da. In this example, we have one X mark on the path before the total path result column. So the total result is an X mark. Then for the final answer, we have that da doesn't mean yes. So ya yeah means yes in column number 1. Then we find that y is false in column number four. So his answer will be a uh, to an incorrect total result. So considering the x mark in the third column, we get ya yeah as a final answer at the end of the path. If we want to check, we have three x marks on the path segments that pass columns one, three, and four. So the odd number indicates that the, num the answer is yeah. Here we can see the full table with the final answers. This table will explain many things. Just note that the double X marks and the double check marks on the segments of the paths inside column number two represent only one X mark or check mark and they are doubled to make the explanation with more colors possible so whenever we have the in the final answer column 
and a check mark in column number four. We always have a check mark in column number two as we see in brown. And whenever we have, yeah, in the final answer column and an X mark in column number four, we always have a check mark in column number two as we see in green. And whenever we have, yeah, in the final answer column and a check mark in column number four, we always have an X mark in column number two as we see in blue. And whenever we have the in the final answer column and an X mark in column number four, we always have an X mark in column number two as we see in purple. Just look at the table carefully and you will understand. Whenever Y is true and his answer is da, then A is always random. Whenever Y is false and his answer is da, then A is always not random. Whenever Y is true and his answer is ya, yeah, then A is always not random. Whenever Y is false and his answer is ya, yeah, then A is always random. Please look again at the table. The answer of the second question determines if Y is true or false. So if A is random, according to the third question answer, then the third God is determined by eliminating the true or false option that was related to Y according to the second question answer and giving the remaining option between true or false to the remaining God. If A was found not random according to the answer of the third question, then A is determined by eliminating the true or false option that was related to Y according to the second question answer and giving the remaining option between true or false to A. And the remaining God will be the random one. In this table, we have the four cases. So, in the first column, when Y is true according to his answer to the second question, and when A is random according to the third question answer, then the remaining God is false. In the second column, when Y is true according to the second question, and A is not random according to the third, then A is false, and the remaining God is random. In the third column, when Y is false according to the second question, and A is random according to the third, then the remaining God is true. And in the fourth column, when Y is false according to the second question answer, and A is not random according to the third question answer, then A is true, and the remaining God is random. So, before I end the video, we determine Y according to the answer of the first question. Then we determine if Y is true according to the answer of the second question. Then we determine what A is according to the answer of the third question. Then after determining what Y is and what A is, we determine the remaining third God by giving him the remaining option between true, false, and random. Here I made this last table to give you all the possible final results according to all the possible answer combinations for the three questions. I'm sorry for the length of the video and thank you very much for watching.